Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Tadeusz Tedwesołowski and I welcome you to Learning Pretzel. Learning Pretzel is a coaching and consultancy services that help individuals and professionals grow and open their mindset, elevate their performance and enhance their life so they can really enjoy themselves. Now today we are launching the very first of pretzel talks where we get cozy and we talk to amazing people who really dedicate their life their professional careers and their personal life to really making difference and helping other people now today i have a very special guest not only is she a dear friend of mine but she's also one incredible power woman she has written and published house ladies and gentlemen whatever you're coming from whatever you're watching from whether it's a morning afternoon pop into the chat where do we have a pleasure to have you in here and please welcome to the stage Miriam Baldwin Miriam unmute yourself my darling and say hello to all of our wonderful <laughs> audience hello everyone hello I'm so excited to thank you <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to see you, Miriam. Now, in today's episode, the very first episode of Pretzel Talks, where I am so delighted that you are the very first guest, I would really like to talk about the subject that I believe the world is getting much better at, but still so many people struggle with. We will talk about your book in a little bit, but I want to really touch on this important subject of a burnout and self-care that is so widespread and I think that now more than ever when people are challenged with COVID it's a serious problem serious trouble really so when I was deciding who do I want to bring to this first episode the decision was super easy now burnout to sorry uh, caregiver 2.0 from burnout to a powerhouse I just couldn't see the link any better but Miriam first of all how are you I am doing great I'm feeling marvelous I'm feeling hyped I feel awesome <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing Miriam in your book that we will dive into deeper in a little bit you talk about something that really stroke a chord with me because in Caregiver 2.0, From Burnout to a Powerhouse, which delightful you, hello, well done, came out yesterday, right? How exciting is that? You take us behind the curtain of a caregiver's life and you really don't shy away from a lot of, a lot of subjects that I have to say I was a little bit surprised reading. I was sometimes emotional, sometimes angry, but I know you really take us behind the curtain of what it really involves to be a caregiver and you share it with us through your personal life story. Now, many times reading your book, I have felt your feelings. I could feel how frustrated, mm -hmm. how disappointed you were, how angry, how ugly certain things are. And I think that there is an incredible power to them. But somehow, reading that book, I felt that although it is titled Caregiver, I don't think it applies just to caregivers. No, not at all. It applies to anyone. You know, Ted, today when I talk to people, I tell them that they should take care of their mental and physical health. Mm. And, you know, I had to learn it myself, how to take care both mentally and physically of Miriam. And in my book, just like you mentioned before, in my book, Caregiver 2.0, From Burnout to Powerhouse, I talk about the mindset. Yes. How long it took me to change my mindset. It didn't happen overnight. Not at all. This but is something incredibly important, Miriam, because, you know, 
I know that we know each other for quite some time now. And, you know, in my work, when I when I work with my clients, right, or with the teams, I find that mindset is really the key ingredients, really, to anything, isn't it? Whether it's yeah. a self-care or taking actions or really applying, implementing change, breaking some cycles that we're so guilty of falling for. <laughs> I think mindset is really incredibly important. I just want to say quickly hello because I see our chat is getting on fire. Hello, yeah. everyone. I see you're from Chicago. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello, New York. Hello, England. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Verona, Sarah, Shirley, Jenny, Joy. Hello, Joy. So lovely to so have nice. you here. Look at that. Look at that. The chat is lighting up so much. Oh, so awesome. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm so excited you are all joining from all over the world. Joy, Shirley, Ashley, Ivona, Ivona. Oh, oh so amazing. Isn't this amazing, Ted, that it's we reach so many people from all amazing. over the world? Absolutely. Yes, Miriam. And one of the one of the important things, and I, I really celebrate that, that although the co although COVID really, you know, challenged a lot of us in a way how we function, I think that it has also had this amazing opportunity to open up a door and really start connecting with so many people. Now, when when I think of your book, and I know you have a piece of it prepared for us which i would really love you to read so if you can just get that ready i yes. love in your book how how natural the conversation flows when i read your book mariam it just felt like i was sitting with you on the sofa with that wise grounded person that just gives me advice on how to go about those things that I struggle with. But I know that it wasn't always easy for you. Would you mind to read the chapter for us? A little snippet so people get this sneak preview of Absolutely. what they can see in your book. Absolutely. This is the book, by the way. <laughs> Fantastic. Absolutely, Ted. I'm going to read just a snippet of... What happened after I got a question from a social worker? Mm. She asked me, Miriam, how are you doing? And this is what the time when Martin was recovering in the hospital. When I got home, I sat alone in the living room, thinking about the conversation that was more of a cry session. Martin and the social worker saw my vulnerability, but I felt relieved. Wow, Miriam is human too. I wanted to do something about my situation. Correction, I needed to do something. I was in the darkness, but I had to find the courage to see the light bulb at the end of the tunnel. Are you crazy, Miriam, woman? Let me tell you this. You are worthy of a wonderful life too. It's time to start thinking about you. There was no reason for me to stay in that unpleasant place. I took a deep breath. And all I could think of were those words. Get out of the darkness. You don't belong here. Can't you see the light? You will get there, but you have to take action. I went upstairs to the bathroom and looked in the mirror. Miriam, what are you going to do for you? To be honest, I couldn't answer. I looked in the mirror again and said, Miriam, what are you going to do for you? What if something happens to you? Who's going to take care of Martin? Name me one good reason why you ignore the signs of your body just one i could not answer mm. oh miriam that is a powerful chapter of your book and i have to say that guys when you're watching it just pop in the comment what was the big thing like can you relate because i have a feeling that many of us have that tendency 
where we just keep you know we we stay on the wagon we we are on the mission we are we keep going we keep going we keep going and we forget that we need to look after ourselves have you ever been there guys just pop in a comment yes that was me hands up heart emoji unicorn emoji if that was you were you forgot that you need to look after yourself one of the biggest things when i was reading that particular chapter miriam was that I think that many of us have a tendency really to keep pushing that self-care, keep pushing, looking after ourselves for mm -hmm. later, for tomorrow, because we have so many other things to do. But we keep forgetting that we can't wait until life isn't complicated, until life isn't hard enough to start caring for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I know exactly what you mean. And, you know, today I, today I'm a happy author. I'm a happy woman. I'm a strong and confident woman. And, you know, that what most people know about me is that I owned a plus size web shop years ago, that I traveled a lot uh, uh, across the globe, sorry, but what they don't know is that it wasn't always like this. Mm. There was a time when I was working full time, when I was the cook, the cleaner, the driver, the groceries woman, when I was dressed as a caregiver. We caregivers, we support our loved ones every single day. Why? Because we love them. But love isn't enough to recharge our battery overnight, right? Mm. We need yeah. to take proper care of ourselves before we can help someone else. And I've said it so many times, caregiving is, it's so challenging, both mentally and physically. And, you know, when the, the story I just read, uh, just now, sorry, um, there was a time when I needed to take care of myself mm. and I had to make a tough decision. And I left Martin for one week while he was recovering in the hospital. Yes, mm. it wasn't easy. And leaving Martin behind it, I didn't leave him behind because he wasn't alone. Yes. I had to leave my husband and it was heartbreaking but I needed to do something. I needed to find out how, how I could invest in myself, how I could revitalize my own energy, how I could own my well-being. Mm. And it, it didn't happen overnight. It took me months, but I did it. I literally pulled myself out of a dark place. Many of us, I think, Miriam, have that same problem. And guys, type in the chat if you can relate to that. When we are suddenly landing in the air of responsibility, whether you're a caregiver, because you might be a caregiver now, you might be preparing to be a caregiver, or you might actually need a caregiver, but yeah. you, you might also be a leader. You might also be a front runner of a team. You might also be a, par a parent, right? You can be a partner who needs to take care. And we very often have a tendency to take on board that responsibility and put so much pressure on ourselves, we forget to care. And when we come to a place where we can no longer sustain ourselves, we feel guilty for wanting to take care of ourselves because we feel like we're failing. We feel like we're not delivering. We feel like we're not performing to the standard that we should, right guys? Type yeah. in the chat if you can relate to that. Self-care, you know, requires intention. It requires giving yourself a permission to care for yourself, right? Because exactly. we have that tendency to feel guilty for wanting to take out time for ourselves. I can only imagine how difficult, Miriam, it must have been when you needed to take that time for yourself in order to be able to care for Martin, right? It was, 
it was a tough ride. It was a tough ride. And as I said before, um, it took me quite some time and I had to take action. And with mm. this, I mean, I had to learn many things. I had to learn techniques and tools, how I could say no to others and yes to Miriam, how I could set boundaries mm. in order to do self-care, how I could ask for help, how I could allow myself to see possibilities and grab opportunities. Does it make sense? Absolutely. I to do all of those things, it's not just one thing. It's a combination. It's changing my mindset. Absolutely. And mindset is a, such a complex. I mean, like we're, we're probably going to circle around that a lot because I think a lot of it starts with mindset. In the work that I do as well, I mean, mindset is really where a lot of the a lot of the roots are embedded. Mindset doesn't doesn't allow for it. If we don't open up our minds, if we don't elevate that possibility, the tagline of learning pretzel is turning obstacles into yeah. opportunities, right? Where I really try to help people see opportunities where a lot of them would see obstacles in the first glance, but I find that you touched on something extremely important as well. And I think that I keep coming back to it that although your book is called Caregiver 2.0, From Burnout to Powerhouse, I don't think it's only going to be aiming for caregivers because even the very fact of you mentioning that you needed to learn how to ask for help Yes. What was that like? The first time I felt really awkward because I thought I could do it all by myself. The second time it felt awkward too, and the third and the fourth and the fifth time. You know, asking for help, I thought that asking for help, I thought that people would think that I was weak. Mm. But today I know that not asking for help was weak. Absolutely. Because when, when, you, when you get help, you can make time for yourself. See what I mean, mean with mindset change? Absolutely. Oh, look, I hear every single word you're saying because really it is so incredible i and it's it's quite funny that we're talking about caregivers and yet me looking at the business concept i see so much resemblance in it because it's the very same thing with leaders you know there's this there's this misconception that to be a leader or perhaps to be a caregiver is to be indestructible is to be self-sufficient and so incredibly resourceful that you can do it all by yourself but the no, truth is that we can't we we physically can't and one of the biggest one of the biggest aspects when it comes to you know i suppose well, it's fair to say that leadership and caregiving have that one thing in common that we take care of others right yeah. so yeah. there would be some form of a link between the two of them and one thing that i see time and time again when when leaders put that pressure upon themselves that they need to know the, they need to know the answers they need to be yeah. able to do it all by themselves right but i think that we all tend to do it it's the self judgment guys type in the chat if you can relate exactly. to this right uh, you exactly. know pop some comments in whether you can relate to that pressure upon yourself that oh i need to do it by myself i am a mother i am a leader i'm a caregiver i am a partner i need to be able to do it by myself because if i don't oh, i no. suck at it right i failed and i felt myself and others and it's a very it's a very difficult conversation to have and i think that it's only the it's only the mindset shift that can really be a start to take action and do a little bit by little bit right baby steps are also steps that's something i always say baby steps are all also steps and you are so right caregiver 2.0 from burnout to powerhouse is for everyone and you know i i mm. wrote this book because i wanted to have awareness 
of what's going on with people who are struggling um, and don't know how to revitalize their energy, how to own their well-being. Mm. And, you know, caregivers burnout is rarely discussed. And yes. that's one of the reasons as well why I wrote this book. It's reality. It's happening every day with a lot of people who mm. don't. And, you know, as I was talking to my friends and family after I recovered, I found out how many people are struggling yes. with opening their well being. And, you know, what? I always say this was one of my favorite affirmations I am worthy of a wonderful life, too. Yes, yes. Hello, celebrate it, celebrate it, everyone, because I love that. Miriam, if you were to tell me this, what is your intention with bringing your book out to the life now? What's your intention with this book? I want to help people, and it doesn't matter where they come from, all over the world. I want, like I said before, more awareness. I want people to know what caregivers go through because it isn't cookie cutter. It's yeah. challenging. But you know, when you are in the dark place, I call it the dark place burnout. Yes. And it's hard for you to see that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. This book is for the people who who can't see the light yet, and the ones who already can see the light, but don't know which techniques and tools to use. I love it. To move forward. I love it. That moment of darkness is a, such a powerful analogy because I think that with every single thing that challenges us in life, we forget that if you if you put it into the analogy of a of a sprouting seed in the ground, mm. right? You're in the middle of a mock, you're in total darkness, and it takes a lot of effort and a lot of energy and a power to really get your first shoots out of there so the leaves can absorb the light to help you grow. And I think it's incredibly powerful, Miriam. The the book we're talking about. I, I personally think it's an incredibly powerful book that everybody should read. I had the privilege and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to read that because what what I really love about it, Miriam, it's not, it's not an instructional step-by-step -step guide and neither is it a biography of how hard your life is. It's a combination where I so appreciate you are going so deep into some vulnerable moments. Well, I'm sure that, guys, when you get to get your copy, um, you know, I'm going to be popping in the links again into the into into the chat. You can get your copies, but you will you will you will you will see that Miriam takes us into a very vulnerable moment. And as I mentioned earlier, you're not shying away from the ugly. I have to say that a few times I had to take a deep breath in and it was it was really eye opening because I perhaps I knew about it but in a way I was ignorant just unaware mm. to what an extent you face it on a daily basis yeah and kudos to you for your resilience and all caregivers who if you come across this video I'm extending my my heart and my thanks to you for, for for what you do because I think it's it, it's 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 an incredible incredible task to have at hand, and yeah. it takes a lot of strength, dedication to which I bow to you, Miriam, for <laughs> for doing it, and not only that, for putting yourself out there and being willing to share your story and so much of a practical tips for people to help them how they can get out from that darkness and shine the light that there is hope, that there is a message out there that something can be done. Mm -hmm. Miriam, when, when I think of the key elements to self-care and a burnout, 
I can't help myself, but I think that you must be great at planning. <laughs> that was one of the key elements, planning, time management, but not only time management. I, the most important key elements for me, Ted, were setting boundaries mm. and for help, seeing, allowing myself, giving myself permission to, to see possibilities, grab opportunities. When I did use those key elements, sorry, I had time to breathe. Mm. I had time to own my well-being, revitalize my energy. And yes, I, I come back to the mindset again. I <laughs> changed my mindset. And you know what happened? I became a better caregiver. So that's mm. why I called Caregiver 2.0. I transformed to a Caregiver 2.0. And because I started owning my well-being and revitalizing my energy, Martin, my husband, could see that I was a better caregiver. He could feel it. He could feel my energy. Mm. And that resulted in him feeling better because mm. let's be honest if you of course if your partner your spouse your brother your dog it doesn't matter your loved one yes sees that you're not doing well they will feel your energy it filters so, down doesn't it the energy yes, really yeah. filters down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i always i always see that as well that you know when people in a high positions and in a high and very authoritative leadership um you know are in charge of a lot of people i always see how their actions really kind of like they filter down like a little yeah. snowflakes they get to the bottom yeah. layers it's like rain soaking up the ground eventually it gets deep and deeper and deeper and it really affects everything it, it really spreads I can't remember now, forgive me, because I can't remember who have said that quote. It's not mine, and I would love to give a credit, but I think it's important to mention that now. I remember a few years ago when I struggled a little bit with uh, people pleasing, and mm -hmm. I was perhaps a little bit lost at you know, um, putting them in front of me. I remember hearing once this quote that really changed my life, that when you serve others by sacrificing yourself when you say yes to others when you should have said no you make them a thief of your well-being without them knowing about it Ooh. and i have to tell you that this really shook up my world that when you give to others but sacrifice and abandon yourself you make them a thief of your well-being with them knowing about it how powerful is this right guys type Ooh. in the chat if that have hurt like if that hits you because yeah. i have to say that when i heard that i was like oh ouch i i i'm not too sure if i was ready to hear that because this is too powerful right it's so easy for us to give instead of receive. Yes. It's so easy to say yes to others, uh, yes to others mm. instead of no. It's yes. so it and it's difficult to turn it around. Absolutely. Until you have changed your mindset. Yes, absolutely. And I see that in the chat there. Hello, Leslie, by the way. I see Ashley. Hello for joining in. But I see that Verona says, oh, that quote, uh, a thief of your well-being, break out loud. Right, right, Verona? I know. I hear you, sister. I was in that place too. And I see Joy going, wow, when you serve others, back, but you sacrifice yourself, you make them a thief of your well-being without them knowing. Isn't it powerful, Joy? I mean, I have to say that it has really shaken me up. It really felt like somebody came over and were like, hey, you, and just Wait really up. shaken me up. And I was like, what's going on? You know, I felt mm -hmm. like a young boy just being shaken up. If you were to give 
our listeners a food for a thought, a walk away that going forward from now on, we want them to reflect on their well-being, on looking after themselves so they don't reach that point of a burnout. What would you say to them? Hmm. Only one? One thought? Well, or because I let, think I have two or Let's two. be respectful. <laughs> let's be respectful of time and keep it short. But okay, give you, I will give keep it short. You'd like to share with them. I will keep it very, very, very short. I hope people, if you have a pen and a paper, please write them down or maybe Ted can type them. It's really short. Okay. I've mentioned this one before. Give me one good reason why you ignore the signs of your body. That's number one. Number two is if you love yourself, name two things you do to show that in 15 seconds. Mm. And number three is You've heard this one again, uh, also earlier. Do you agree that you are worthy of a wonderful life too? Mm. That's what I say. Absolutely. I would just want to jump and piggyback on that a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. And just ask yourself a question. I very often have this, this, this conversation with my clients and I always ask themselves this question. You're at the forefront. You're at the leader. You're a carer. How sustainable do you think your practice is? How far is it going to carry you? Mm -hmm. And what are the consequences when something happens to you? Because I think that we forget about that. And you mentioned that. And I found that so powerful in this fragment you wrote. And I so wish we could read the whole book to today. But, and, and, and I'm sure that I hope, I hope, Miriam, we're going to have an opportunity to talk about it again. Because there's so much in your book. You're such a wonderful people. I would love, I would love you to come back. But I think that you said that in the, fra in the fragment of the book you were reading as well that you know who's going to care for martin if something happens to me right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i always ask this question okay so you know you think you can't take break you said it in the book love and a overnight sleep is not enough to recharge you mm -hmm. because we keep forgetting that self-care is not you know dipping yourself in a beautiful bubbly foamy bath oh. and oh. sipping on a on a prosecco self-care is maintaining yourself is, is making sure your practice and your life is sustainable you know it's looking after your stress how do you cope with adversity how do you manage how do you open your mindset how do you turn it into a possibility how do you ask for help do you perm do you give yourself permission to ask yeah. for help do yeah. you give yourself permission to take time out to look after yourself yeah. because we ride on that pony day after day after day and it's like not looking after it at all you yes. have to you have to build a sustainability of your performance of your mindset of your attitude of your own well-being before you care for others right maya angelou has this beautiful quote that i know it's probably being taken a little bit out of context here but i absolutely love that she said that don't take a shirt from a naked man. Mm, mm. I love this. I really love I this. And, you know, there are so many tips in my book. And I ask questions in my book. I had to answer these questions years ago myself. Mm. And some of them may make you feel uncomfortable but I've been there too. You have to take action and you can get out. Yes. Yes, I love that part when in a book, 
you ask questions and you are quite right. You, you know, they, they might make you feel uncomfortable, but I think that they are really thought provoking and reflection provoking that, you know, it's not, it's not as easy. We, and this is where I found it quite interesting. You know, sometimes simple questions are the hardest to answer. Mm -hmm. And those simple answers, you know, were very often, it's a simple fix. But the truth is that we are somehow either afraid of the truth or we are afraid of those answers or we are just afraid that we won't know what to do with them, that we look away and willingly ignore them. Yeah, exactly. And also, Ted, the last thing I want to say is the what if. What if this happens? What if they think that? What if? Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Mm. I would say keep the yeah and skip the butt. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, just to just to kind of like get towards wrapping up because I so love this conversation and we need to repeat that, but I'm sure that we're going to have to start wrapping up soon. The one, the one thing that I was going to ask you as well, Miriam. So you wrote the book now, right? But you're also a caregiving, caregiver advocate. You're a coach, you're a trainer, you're a total power bomb. Uh, how people can get in touch with you? I'm gonna pop the links into the chat, but what people, how can they get in touch with you? Where, what can they get the help from you with? People can go to my website, miriambaldwin.com and they can schedule a free call with me, a free 15 minute call, um, because I like to see and hear people before I start working with them, start coaching them. Because my journey is not your journey or someone else's journey. And yes. via my website, they can uh, schedule a call with me, follow me on social media, because I share some tips as well on social media. Um, follow me, uh, follow my YouTube videos where I share all my interviews together with my fellow caregiver and sister, Ashley. We do a lot of interviews. Um, and in those interviews, we also share a lot of tips you can implement in your daily life. Mm, love that. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes we we or sometimes the how do you say that? Um, it's right in front of us, but we don't yes. see it. Mm. You see, it's right in front of us, but we don't see it. So if you go to my website, schedule a call with me and let's talk and see where you are in your journey. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. And please keep in mind that you are worthy of a wonderful life too. Mm. You deserve a wonderful life too, even though you are caregiving or not. You are worthy of a wonderful life too. And I want you to know that I appreciate you. I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate you for what you are doing but please keep in mind that you deserve a wonderful life too. Mm. That is beautiful, Miriam. Now I see that people are chatting, uh, popping in the chat. Yes, yes, uh, uh, keep the yes, skip the boss. I love that comment, Joy, that, that definitely you know stood out for me. Guys, what was your biggest takeaway from this particular thing? Was there anything that particularly stood out for you? What was something that was the biggest value for you from this particular life? If you want to pop it into the comments, I would absolutely love, love, love to see that. Now, thank you very much, Miriam, for everything, for absolutely everything, for being the wonderful woman you are, for being a hope and a light to people who probably just like yourself have come into those dark places and whether they're just entering them now or whether they're 
crawling out of them or running out of them or what they've already been there and now they're trying to process it and understand what actually happened you know and learn new practices new processes get better at it so it doesn't happen again and again i just wish you the very best of luck and for everybody who's watching thank you so much for your time thank you so much for your attention for your love in the chat and miriam show her some love in the chat send her some, really so nice. and some love and flowers <laughs> Sarah said, yes, yes, you are worthy of a wonderful life. She loves it, absolutely loves it. And each person's journey is different, right? Right, Sarah, I totally agree with none of us. None of us have the same journey. We can be very alike, but very unique. And yes, Shirley says that also the mindset and knowing that you are worthy to remember to set boundaries. That's very important, really important. I absolutely love that. Now, for every one of you, there are links in the chat, guys, in the comments there where you can actually order Miriam's book. It's officially out now. It's available in a hard copy and in a Kindle version. So make sure you make your way out there, um, you know, and acquire one of those books. And even if it is not for yourself, think about those people who might be caregiving for someone or maybe somebody who's preparing to become a caregiver. Mm -hmm. You know, make that gift and do the gesture of helping them prevent the burnout. And whether it is a professional or unprofessional, whether it's a, you know, a friend or a neighbor, just be kind and spread the love because that's what Miriam is trying to do with her work, apart from all of the other wonders. Miriam, thank you so much for joining me this evening. And I am so delighted to have you here. And guys, I hope you have enjoyed the pretzel talk. I, I, I really do hope to bring more and more and more incredible people into this light to share the wonderful work they do in a private life. And in a professional life as well. I see that uh, Ashley says Aww. she's so <laughs> proud of you. Joyce says, love, love, love the messages and energy from both of us. Thank you so much. Oh, Informative and engaging, really loving it, loving it. Stacy also says, so, so true, preparing others to do the caregiving journey. Absolutely, right? Miriam. Any last words to our lovely audience who kept us company this evening? Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Spread the word. Caregiving is challenging for us, for any, any one of us. And the world needs to know what we go through. I'm on a mission together with Ashley. And I can't thank you all enough for your support. The fact that you were here today with us, with Fed and Miriam. Thank you so much. And please, please, please spread the word. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Miriam. Take care. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Stay tuned in. Follow Miriam, follow Learning Pretzel. We'll keep you posted. I'm sure that we will be here again and I'm sure that there'll be plenty more guests. Thank you very much. Thank you.